Hi, it's Leah from the future. I know you just started this video, but my phone has a speaker problem in terms of hearing phone calls without making them speaker. I didn't realize that this apparently also impacts my recording audio. I'm a sound fuzzy to everyone who I talk to and no one says anything <laughs> to me about it. So I recorded this whole podcast and I think I sound a little muffled the whole time. I think it's a good podcast, but I sound muffled. I just wanted to apologize. I'm sorry. Enjoy. Good to see you. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> who dis? New podcast, who dis? So it's been a while. <laughs> I like forgot how to do these. I want to say my last podcast was like May? sometime in the summer <sighs> a lot of stuff has happened yeah let's jump in all right so it's so funny because I know I think <laughs> for a fact that my last podcast was called something about getting my knitting mojo back or something to that effect that I was like in the full swing of knitting well that wasn't a lie because I did feel that way, but there was a lot of other things that were coming together in my life and they sort of took priority over the knitting and I really, I didn't lose my knitting mojo immediately after I got it, but I was very focused on those other sort of personal life things that were happening. Which is unfortunate because right I think after I recorded that podcast or sometime after that podcast was Zombie Knit Apocalypse, and it was amazing, 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 so fun. I had the best time, I got to see the best people. It was um, fantastic. I don't think that I got to talk about it or post anything. The moment has passed, I might include some pictures, but other than that. thinking like how, how how I didn't plan this podcast whatsoever I was thinking how deep do I want to go with this okay well uh I was diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome in whenever July June something and it was really interesting because it took a lot of random symptoms that I'd been having for years and years and gave me an answer and it's funny because I was on birth control you know from the ages of 15 until like 29 and so I would never have known because I didn't because I had birth control <laughs> okay so um and I don't have what I would considered the classic symptoms uh like hirsutism like uh hair and acne and um excessive weight gain which I mean I have gotten a lot of weight gain um, for, for me, that has been difficult to lose, but I always thought it was because of the birth control. Anyway, I don't, I really don't know how much I want to talk about this or like how much people want to hear about it. Um, but anyway, suffice to say it has been very interesting. Um, 
and I have been making progress, but over the summer and in the fall, I was really focused on sort of learning everything I could about hormones and insulin resistance and um, how to manage all of that and manage it in a way that feels good for me. So I'm not going to talk about specific health stuff because I think we all often have different philosophies and nobody knows anything, including the experts. And so it's really like doing what feels best for you. So what I'm doing is what feels best for me. Yeah. So knitting. What have I been doing for knitting? Well, in August, I signed up for a test knit from Stephanie Lotvin of Tally Bean Knits. And I think she gave a generous amount of time to complete the test knit. I didn't meet that deadline. I think it's the first test knit that like truly I didn't meet the deadline. Like not like a week or two past it, like months. Like the pattern was released. Um, really like truly my greatest knitting shame. Like even talking about it, I finished it. I finished the test knit two days ago and I'm like getting prickly armpits, like being like so stressed, feeling so bad about it. But you see, do you see, do you see, do you see this a beautiful, beautiful swancho? So I had took a bunch of pictures today. Steve was a fantastic photographer. Oh my God, it is five minutes in. Have I introduced myself? Hello. <laughs> My name is Leah. I use she, her pronouns, and this is the Eventual Knits podcast. Um, I am Miss underscore LJV on Instagram. Um, you can find me as Eventual on Ravelry if, Ravel if Ravelry is accessible to you. But to be honest, um, I have not been really using social media. Um, much of late. I mostly just maybe post or I look at a few people's stories, but I haven't really actually been using um, social media. I've sort of really pulled back from being in that arena and being more present in um, in life or like instead of shouting into the void, maybe shouting in my real life, <laughs> you know, something like that. Anyway, um, yes, so Swancho. Steve, my partner, my spouse, he took a lot of really, really cute pictures of me. It was just a really good day. I'm so overjoyed to have this finished. I felt so bad for not finishing it. It has nothing to do with Stephanie's pattern. It had everything to do with me and my life, but I finished it. I've worn this all day today. It finally dried. I love it. Um, I can just show you really quick. Oh, swan joke. So cute and cozy. Um, the sleeves are like short half sleeves um, because the I think the idea is like it's cozy and it's like a snuggie and um, I really thought that the arms being short would bother me. Like I'd be like oh my arms are you know rubbing into my body and making me sweaty but that has not been my experience. It's really like wearing a really really beautiful snuggie and I love it. I knit the size one. Um, this is all done in Broco Vintage DK, so it's quite affordable. I don't remember the colorways, I threw all that stuff away a long time ago, but suffice to say, uh, you can definitely, if you have a local yarn store, if you, whatever site sells Barocco, um, these are very common colors. So it's a navy blue, a white icy blue, this is not white, it is a blue, and sort of a not cornflower, I don't think. It's it's like it's a type of sky blue or maybe like a type of ocean. Yeah. So my greatest knitting shame. I finally finally did it. <laughs> this of course it took me it, honestly, in terms of the actual hours put into this sweater, it did not take me any more than any other sweater, really. Um, I would say it was probably around 55, 56, 57, 58 hours, something around there, which is, I think, pretty standard for my sweaters. And honestly, like, shawls take me longer. 
so it had nothing to do with the fact that this was a slog or anything like that um there are a few sections of strand um, of carrying uh yarn on the back but stephanie does a really good job of making those very minimal and you're only ever working with two colors at a time and it's very logical and so what's cool and fun about this because it's a swan show really you're just increasing every so often like i don't know once every well depending on the pattern repeat once every several rows it's a lot of rows in between increases and so you're just knitting chunks and knitting chunks and knitting chunks and then when you're finished then you switch to when you divide for the sleeves then you just switch to plain the the main color and when you're done you just do ribbing for some half sleeves so i did mine It looks like they start sort of midway through my arm, like midway through my forearm. In my head, I was thinking that it would be starting from the elbow, but in terms of when I'm wearing this and how long it is, it goes all the way down to my hands and it goes maybe a couple inches before my elbow. And then the, you know, the ribbing at the top for the turtleneck is quite long and very luxurious and I'm a person who doesn't like things on my neck um, most of the time this Barocco is like very soft very nice against my skin ah it's so beautiful I just keep looking at my own self just just really just really feeling the sweater and feeling the weight off of it so, yeah so she said that this uh, motif or this yeah this pattern was inspired by English Ivy I think and I don't know. It's just so pretty. I can't stop looking at it. with it happy to be here happy to be finished I really felt like I shouldn't continue moving forward or doing anything until I'd finished this I didn't really have any content or I didn't have a lot of content anyway for a podcast but I wasn't feeling like recording a lot because I was again focusing on my life stuff and um two because I really wanted to finish this before I did anything else even if I was also finishing other things like I, I couldn't literally take this everywhere I went it wasn't the only thing I worked on but it was the biggest shame I'm so I feel so bad Stephanie I don't I assume you never see my podcast but if you do I am so sorry and I do really truly try to finish my testness on time because it's very important to me to help out like the point is to help out the designers but other things what else have I finished okay so you may have seen this scarf shawl skirt Sh shawl in the past but I finally finished it it is just a very simple lace shawl I am realizing I am so unprepared for this. I don't have any of the details for any of this stuff. Well, I guess I'll just post it either in the description or on here somewhere, probably in the description though, because it's more accessible. So anyway, beautiful gradient scarf. I used to only work on, I'm going to take this off for this. Um, I used to only work on this scarf during staff meetings when I was a teacher. And so it was very, very slow work because 
I mean, staff meetings happened a lot, but they weren't, you know, that long, or maybe we were working on other things and I had to put it down. So this, I sort of decided to like either frog all of the projects that I was working on or finish them. And so if I was going to finish them, I created sort of a plan on what I was going to do to finish them. And on this one, I decided I was going to finish it. I had three-fourths of it done. Like I was somewhere in the sort of light green yellow section. And so I just did a little bit most days here and there for a while. And it really just flew off the needles. And it was really fun because the yarn was in a ball. So I had hand wound it, hand wound it at a baseball game in 2017 I think I wound the yarn at a baseball game that I went to uh, it was a twins game that I went to with my family and it's only really memorable because I don't go to baseball games but we, we did it for Father's Day and so um, I specifically remember winding it up and I had the yarn around my neck and I was winding it up and what was cool about that is then I forgot sort of what all the colors looked like on the inside and I was able to like watch it sort of unfurl like I knew the general color scheme but I couldn't remember how beautiful they looked and I started with this really vivid bright pink and then I was very stuck in this sort of yellow for such a long time and then it ends with a very like ocean ocean blue oh, love. so that's something I got done and I love it I'm not really talking about everything I finished um I don't think I can put pictures of some things like I'm thinking I finished a pair of socks for Steve I've started a bunch of things. Wow, yet again. Yeah, not prepared. So I guess my podcasts are just not gonna be the way that they used to be. Um, always, like I'm not gonna come with a super plan. I guess I'm not gonna always talk about everything that I'm working on. I Again, I have nothing except for my completed projects here. Um, I'm gonna stop talking about it. So one of the things that I decided that I was going to finish is this cashmere cowl <laughs> no this project cracks me up people because i bought the yarn for this project again probably in like 2017 ish 20 maybe not maybe it was older than that 2016 maybe um i bought it in madison at a store that no longer exists and i had bought this yarn after seeing a sample knit in this brown and then another color and that color at the time was out of stock but I really wanted to knit this cowl and so I actually at the time bought this these two yarns which is like a cream and they're both naturals a cream and a brown and then I ordered another set which I still have in my my bulky yarn is not kept in here <laughs> Just choked on some cashmere mm. so anyway what's so funny about this cowl is that it is basically knit around pearl around and I would say this project probably has the most mistakes of anything that I have ever knit probably ever even my beginning projects honestly I think there's more mistakes in it um I'm like picturing my old very first washcloth I ever knit that had like really thin spots because the cats had chewed my yarn and some holes and of course I accidentally ended up knitting on the wrong side a couple times and I messed up some of this like the stitches it was a sampler so oh my gosh so funny this was way worse so lots of things went wrong multiple times I just wasn't paying attention and would either knit two rows or purl two rows or something like that. Um, yeah. There's a whole strip in here where I just used white twice or something. I don't know. Uh, what else? 
Oh, um, moths or something got to it, and so they uh, chewed up a bunch of spots. Oh, in here, but I actually, I, I think I salvaged that pretty well. That's the inside. Look at that. That's not so bad. It's a big hole, though, that I didn't notice until the project was finished, and I didn't even notice it. Steve pointed it out to me. He was like, what happened? <laughs> um... The, uh, the carrying of the yarn up didn't go so well. So anyway, by the time I was done, I... I think I actually really only knit this last two, last couple inches. And so I think actually that mistake where it's the same color is where I was like, I'm finishing this project and I'm starting here. And that's where I started. But you know what? It is so, so warm. It is so cute. Oh, look at that. You can barely even tell there's mistakes. Who cares? Um, I actually wore this on a walk yesterday when it was so windy and so cold. The weather lied. It said it was supposed to be like a high of 36, but it was also uh, Fahrenheit and it was also a, a low of like seven. It was really cold all day. It was certainly a lie. Ah, uh, look at this. Mm. So cute. Love it. This is, it was just nice to get this finished. Hallelujah. At, I want to say, I think it was Zombie Knit Apocalypse 2019. I bought some yarn in a kit based upon a sample. I don't remember what shop it was from. I also don't remember what kit it was. I only remember that the main color or the oatmeal colored cream was called or oatmeal colored yarn was called maple brown sugar because it was such a perfect name and I'm so glad I have a ton of it left <laughs> so I can use it in something else. It actually is perfect for like heels and or I, I don't do after that heels cuffs and toes of socks or at least toes. But anyway, um, I started this project in I think 2020 and when I realized that the sample or the and the image that I was picturing in my head wasn't how the pattern was written, I sort of like stalled out. So I got, I think I got these two stripes or this stripe, this orange and uh, maple brown sugar and half of this yellow or a part of this yellow and then I stalled out I just quit I was like I don't know why this sounds so hard but it is so hard and it's a scarf that is knit in the round and then seamed I um, I kitchenered it at the end and yeah I again this was one of those projects that this was for Steve and so I was going to finish it and I thought what better time to finish it a lot of these projects were finished like end of November, in December basically. And um, I, again, I made a ton of progress on my, oh my gosh. I made a ton of progress. This everyone is called my Hedera sweater, Hedera. Um, anyway, so I was going to finish this for Steve and so I, I did it went again it went really fast once I was like I can figure this out and I did and it was fine so oh that's just it is a nice super long scarf and I love it it's so cute look at these colors it's such a perfect fall scarf I'm so happy I finished it I love when Steve wears it it looks so cute on him And so it's just alternating colors and the pattern, which again, I'll write in the description, wants you to do alternating stripes in a fade sort of. So right, yellow, yellow, brown, light brown, yellow, light brown, yellow, dark brown, yellow, dark brown. And then it wants you to do continue the dark brown then. So dark brown, red, dark brown, red, and then red, orange, red, orange, then orange, dun, dun, orange dun, right? But then here, what I ended up doing was, since I didn't transition, I wanted half of it to be sort of light, 
and half of it to be dark or like bold so more subtle and more bold and that is what I ended up doing and I love it I'm kind of sad I didn't use get to use the lighter orange a little bit more because it is actually like a really pretty color but either way looks beautiful gorgeous Hmm. Love it. How you liking this parade of FOs? I've been gone so long, I'm just shotgunning everything at you. <laughs> okay, last thing I'm going to show you is a sweater. Which way is the front? I don't, I do not know. It's so funny that I, I get so caught up in figuring out which way is the front on sweaters, especially because I definitely do short rows so that it gets, you know, taller in the back. But a lot, but on the outside, it is so hard to tell which one's the front and which one's the back. And that should be like a positive, right? That it's so good that you can't tell which way is the front and which way is the back. So this sweater is a raglan sweater that I knit probably in September and I finished it in October when I was up north with um, a few of my girlfriends and it was such it's such a good sweater and uh, man is this camera just insulting the color of this um, I want to say this sweater is, the colorway is berry. Anyway, I'll post the details below, but it's a tweed. Um, I have a bunch of tweed yarn. You can see some right there, and there's more down here. And really a lot of my DK is tweed, and this is exactly why. I love this sweater. Um, I hope I can include some pictures of what this actually looks like because in terms of color, because it is gorgeous. The color is a rich, shiny, amazing, like berry pink. Mm. Mm. And I wear this sweater all the time. Like you can, you can see, or maybe you can't as much. It's almost matted or almost felted um, here-ish. Because I, I really, I truly, I, I beat this sweater up. I wear it all the time. I wore it up north. We were like hiking and stuff. Uh, I love it. I, it's probably my first garment that I reach for consistently. Maybe my second. My other one is the, um, my sweater in a day sweater. What was that called? Anyway, I wear that a lot too, but this one I wear more and I have a feeling I'm going to be wearing my Hedera a lot too. I feel bad that I can't talk about what everything's called. I'm not a perfect person. <laughs> so, how are you? I'm so glad you're here. Welcome back. Let me go ahead and let's pull you a little closer. Let's hang out. So that is basically it for knits. Like the world is my oyster right now. I have a few projects hanging over my head that I haven't finished. And again, I'm going to reassess whether or not I want to finish them or like a lot of times. So for example, socks, if I'm doing a specific sock pattern for myself and I stall out on them, what happens is a lot of times I just, because I'm, if you knit socks, you, you carry them around with you a lot, right? So I'm not usually keeping track super closely in a pattern and it feels so overwhelming for some reason to try to figure out where you're at, then just rip it out and start over. And obviously the time that you've put into the sock is way more than just ripping, than just figuring it out on the, um, on where you are on the pattern. But like, it just feels so overwhelming. And so I have a couple pairs of socks that I have started and gotten a decent way on probably up to the heel or near the heel and I just I 
I don't know. It's hard. Um, I didn't, I didn't do Vlogmas this year. I really did consider it. And I was like, I just don't have the energy. Which is funny because I've been reflecting. And those of you who were with me for Vlogmas 2020 will remember that I was doing sleep therapy for insomnia at the time. And I recently revisited some old journal entries uh, from that time period. And it's amazing to see how much progress I've made and to be like, wow. I, I mean, I didn't forget about having insomnia whatsoever because I have ha had it my entire life. But, and I do, I pre, <laughs> anyone who talks about sleep, I will preach to you, go get a sleep study. Like, not just for people who need CPAPs, people who have chronic insomnia. Chronic insomnia means a lot of different things. And, I mean, literally, sleep therapy <laughs> saved my life. And reading what it was like back then and what my sleep quality was like, it's just, it's so, so vastly different. And I, I do not take for granted that I can fall asleep within... A half an hour of laying down um, that even though I do still wake up multiple times a night I can fall back asleep really fast and I sleep through until at least 45 minutes before I'm supposed to get up but to be fair <laughs> a lot of times one of my cats wakes me up in the morning at like uh, 45 minutes before I'm supposed to get up like he wants attention he's bored it's time to get up um, but I can usually get him to lay down with me and sh while I try to finish sleeping. Whereas before, I was literally the picture of Squidward with his eyes open and bloodshot. <laughs> also, what's really funny is because of the pandemic, I was able to... The pandemic hit right when I was finishing my sleep therapy. And that worked out well my brother also died around that time so minus my brother dying uh really that was the perfect time to really solidify my sleep schedule and turns out my perfect sleep schedule is to go to bed at midnight sometimes sometimes 11 30 sometimes 12 30 somewhere around there around midnight and to wake up at 8 15. that is like my, my perfect natural ish sleep schedule do I want to wake up ever? No, that's still an issue. Sleep sleep therapy did not cure my desire to never wake up once I'm asleep, but it did cure my being awake for most of the night, staring into the dark, being sad. <laughs> Otherwise, I mean, we're all, we're all in a pandemic, right? So there hasn't been too many uh, brand new things. Um, I've just been taking steps to improve my life, which includes a lot of self-reflection, which includes uh, surrounding myself with things that make me feel happy and fulfilled. And a large part of last year was spent getting rid of things we don't want or need or use. So I guess decluttering a lot of our life, but that was physical, but also emotional also just you know just general dealing with general toxicity um and i really can't complain like i'm so happy i just i love my life i guess <laughs> which is which is great oh another major thing we started in august was i like can't so people are really weird about money they don't want to talk about it uh, makes people feel really insecure. Um, it feels kind of like a competition for some reason. Uh, so people are really uncomfortable talking about it. And I'm kind of the opposite. I feel like everybody should talk about money. I think that everybody should figure their, their stuff out. Like yet another thing that I want to scream to people about is managing your money appropriately. So, I mean, over the last 13 years, Steve and I have experienced a lot or had experienced a lot of lifestyle creep 
We also had a lot of major, not a lot, but a few really major expenses when we couldn't afford it. So a really, the, the best example was in 2011 when our cat Grimm had blocked, uh, got a blocked bladder a bunch of times and had a lot of scarring to the point that he needed surgery. And the surgery itself actually ended up only being like $900 only <laughs> and but the amount of times that we brought him to the vet for a blocked bladder prior to that all of that sort of added up to about five thousand dollars in debt and this was again in 2011 so we were 23 you know we would both just recently graduated college and we were uh, living in an apartment on our own um, which was thankfully very very cheap but Something like that. That took us a long time to pay off because we just couldn't prioritize paying off that kind of debt. And uh, I would say the biggest, the two biggest things that kept a, a, a revolving credit balance for us over the last, again, you know, more than 10 years ha was gifts, buying gifts for others and just overspending from lifestyle creep. And we were never at risk, but we realized that we could actually be so much more responsible with our money. We don't have kids. We are very stable, like all like our house, knock on wood, <laughs> is doing great. We, we replaced basically, oh, that was another thing. We replaced basically every appliance after we bought our house, not because we wanted to, but because everything broke, because that's how the universe works sometimes. And, you know, we got a roof replaced twice. Um, a tree fell on our house. Like, there's so many things that, <laughs> that happened that just kept us just rolling in debt. And it did not help that maybe some of us got uh, very into yarn and knitting and indie dyed yarn and supporting people that she wanted to support and maybe was buying a lot of yarn all the time that maybe she maybe shouldn't have uh as much so in august we really sat down and looked at all of our finances and now we track our finances every single day and i have a whole trajectory from september where we only had like 120 now again i want to clarify again that everything that i'm saying about us and money is not a judgment statement on anybody else and your situation because i know that there are infinite possibilities on what is going on in your life so please do not think i'm critiquing you i am only talking about me okay so we started in uh september where we had 120 dollars left at the end of the month and that was only because of steve's side hustle which is uh he like goes to thrift stores or garage sales um he prefers garage sales and um buys things either for himself like games and stuff like that or if he knows that a game will sell on like ebay or uh gamestop or whatever he'll sell them there he does he, it's also other things too not just games but primarily games things that he knows about and then just since then we have gone up and up and up and up and up and full disclosure uh in August, we had probably $8,200 in credit card debt, which is primarily all those things that I said as the result of. And we, as of end of January, have paid off all of that debt, all $8,200 of that. And it's wild because it didn't feel difficult at all. We tentatively set budgets we apparently according to youtube on all the youtube videos that i've watched we spend way more on groceries than the average family does and part of that is like me just i'm supporting my pcos <laughs> like gotta buy gotta buy lots of meat apparently anyway supporting the pcos and so, I mean, really, we spend a lot, a lot on groceries per month. And 
but everywhere else we could really cut down. I can't tell you the number of things that we were subscribed to that we either didn't know about or didn't realize. <laughs> like, <laughs> or silly things like Steve has, uh, you know, an account set up with Robin Hood or whatever. And he thought he was giving, 50, I mean, I know it's an investment, so it's still his money, but um, he thought that he was putting $50 a month in and it was $50 a week. Just like, where's our money going? So figuring all of that out and then adjusting uh, has been so helpful. And so at the end of December, with, the, with federal student loans being uh, pushed back again until May, we were able to start sinking funds. So now we have a gift sinking fund so that we're putting in a little bit from each paycheck into our sinking funds for gifts so that by October we'll have enough money to buy gifts for our families um, or something to that effect, right? At least some gifts. And we have sinking funds for other important things like pet and sinking funds, if you don't know, are just basically like cash envelopes or something like set aside this money. You're just categorizing money that it's not just a general savings. Um, like we um, before we started paying down the debt, we made sure that we got a base level of savings, which I think some people say is like a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars is not a lot of money. <laughs> when it comes to if something breaks, like if I say your car breaks down, if an appliance breaks, a thousand dollars probably isn't going to cover it. So we went for 2,500 plus we wanted to have, um, like we wanted to have our total savings be about 10,000. And so we first put all of our money towards that. And then we put all of our money towards paying off the credit cards. And now we're putting all of our money to paying off student loans because we have a lot of student loan debt. Steve went to a private college uh, and I, uh, while I don't have a lot of undergrad loans, I have just a little bit. Um, all of my loans are federal, which is nice, but I have a little bit of undergrad and then I also went to grad school and got a master's degree so, at a private college. So uh, I have those loans, but we're still working on it. If you're interested in hearing more about that, um, I'll probably bring it up from time to time because it does take up a lot of brain space in terms of like thinking and planning. And if you don't know where to start, um, maybe I'll, I'll talk about that or something at some point. That has been a really fun, honestly, like interesting journey. I don't feel deprived whatsoever. I feel very proud of the progress that we've made and I feel very responsible and secure instead of maybe in the past, a little bit of anxiety being like, yeah, I bought more yarn or I bought this other appliance or I, you know, I felt like I really needed this thing. And I, you know, the bank account's like, <laughs> so just cut, cutting back on that lifestyle creep. One of the really big expenses that in the past would have been super stressful for us, but we were able to save and budget for, um, was we finally discovered that one of our cats, Grim had hyperthyroid and that's fatal and he has definitely been having it for a while we it just took us a long time to pinpoint what it was um, with with our vet and there's really well there's three options let your cat die he's 15 two you can give him medication that has to be adjusted their entire lives um, and has a lot of side effects that are the same as the symptoms that they have when they're not treated or three, give them radiation therapy that targets the tumor on their thyroid and shrinks it. So, and that cures them. It's a 95, depending on who you talk to, 90 to 95% cure rate. Um, cure, <laughs> like solves it permanently. And so we went for that. It was, it ended up being about $2,600. Hyperthyroid can mask kidney disease. so when we have to bring him back to see how the treatment worked, if it got all of the hyperactive thyroid cells, or if hopefully it didn't work too well and make him hypothyroid, we're gonna get him checked in a few in a month or two. And hyperthyroid can mask kidney disease. And if you've ever owned cats or dogs, or if you have ever known any humans, kidney disease is also fatal in everybody, um, or renal failure in general. And so, Assuming he doesn't have kidney disease, that he has been a very healthy cat, minus his blocked bladder surgery stuff 10 years ago. Um, since then, for 10 years, so healthy, and then hyperthyroid. So I think that he still has a good amount of life left in him, 
and so that's why we elected to pay for that surgery and I am so glad we did he is improving it's been two weeks since we've had him home um two and a half weeks I don't know something like that two weeks since we've had him not having to be isolated so about three weeks and he is so much better he hasn't vomited in two weeks like he used to throw up every single day and anxious about food and so skinny and just like just all over the place and now he's so calm and peaceful and content and I'm so happy I love him so much he is like my favorite favorite ever so that was really stressful it was so difficult um to to have him gone he was gone for two weeks because he was radioactive with that therapy that primarily comes out in their waist not just like exuding off of them like mr burns in the simpsons I bring you love. but he was not supposed to come into contact with us but i did a lot of research and because he was not he was not tolerating isolation he was simply not and it wasn't that he wanted to get out it was that he was lonely you guys he was lonely he was lonely so steve and i quarantined with him we just kept our distance um most of the literature said that as long as he's not like licking you or you're not like letting him sit on your lap um if you if you're at least three feet distance from him then it was okay so we just did that for a week and we turned it into something fun um we just played games and i worked on my sweater and he was happy and he wasn't caterwauling himself to the point of losing his voice which is what had been happening up until that point so that's what i've been up to uh world oyster i can't wait to come back i missed you um i'm excited to work on new things and show you new things and see where this podcast evolves and goes to thank you so much for being here with me today let me know what you're working on um if you are a returning viewer thank you for coming back i'm sorry that i've been gone i i know for me how sad that is when i watch someone regularly and they just disappear and i miss them and i don't know what happened or whatever and like that's disappointing I don't I didn't mean to be gone for this long and I do want to keep doing podcasts so please don't don't fret but thank you so much for being here please tell me anything you want to tell me in the comments I look forward to seeing you in my next video bye